check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Welcome to another episode of Backstage with Angelo. Today, in this episode, I'm gonna talk to you guys about what I think about what people say that why Miss Venezuela always wins every pageant. But before starting, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm very, very happy because I know this has nothing to do with the topic that or the conversation or the topic pretty much that we're talking about today and is that I just baked a delicious um, I have my kitchen like right on my my right hand side and I just baked a wonderful cheese bread that I just learned to do a few days ago so I've been doing bread and bread and bread so I'm gonna gain all the weight in the world but that's for another conversation so um, let's focus on our main point today, which is why Miss Venezuela always wins. And um, and I think that's something that people just say, like it, it's out there and, and, and people say why Miss Venezuela always wins. Uh, I, I've heard that a lot here in, in Calgary when I am talking to my pageant contestants or, or my the, the girls that I train for pageants or for modeling. And they asked me, why does Miss Venezuela always win? Miss Universe or Miss World or Miss International? Well, that's not actually true. Miss Venezuela doesn't always win. Like, there's so many years we haven't won. There's been a few years that we haven't made it to the top 10 or so on. And, um, but there's certainly been a lot of um, victories in, in pageants. And I think that part of the secret for that is the preparation of the girls. I think it's a key feature in why Venezuela does so well in international pageants. And the first one is their preparation, their training. So these girls remember that um, back home in Venezuela, the girls start doing modeling at around 10 years old um, with the goal of going to Miss Venezuela when they turn 17 or 18 years old. So they need to be well prepared for that. They start taking modeling lessons since they're kids. Um, and when they turn 18, they are already models and they know how to dress, they know how to make up, they know how to do many, many other things. And they're so ready and so focused and, and, and for the pageant that they do very well. And the competition back home is really difficult. There's always castings of almost a thousand girls and only 24 make it to the finals. But back to the to the main topic, which is training. So remember these girls, like when you win Miss Venezuela, you have to start your preparation. And I'm talking about the organization before. I'm not too sure how the preparation is with a new organization. I have no information about it, but I would certainly <laughs> love to do. So if you guys know anything about how the preparation is at the moment, like with the new organization, you can just leave your comments below and um, maybe we can just discuss that some other time in another video. But this time, what I remember was when Osmel was in the organization, when he used to be the president of, of Miss Venezuela, I remember that um, the girls were st would start training since like 6 a.m. in the morning, of course. <laughs> it cannot be 6 a.m. in the afternoon or evening. Um, so from 6 a.m. until 11. So it's, it's a very uh, thorough um, training. It's really hard. Like it, it's practically a job. You're, you're basically, they get paid of course, for being Miss Venezuela, they get, they get a salary or before they would get a salary. So basically they would be doing their job. So they go to uh, makeup lessons, um, runway lessons, they go to the gym. Uh, I think it's once or twice. I'm not too sure about that number, but I think it's twice. 
um, they go to makeup lessons, they go to acting lessons, they sometimes they're called to different programs where they have to be ready in minutes, I mean hair and makeup, to co-host TV shows there. So that's, that's the purpose of having someone getting used to the camera. Because if they can do that, then when they get to Miss Universe or Miss World or Miss International or any other pageant in the world, they know exactly how to pose, they know how to um, how to perform in front of a camera, how to talk. They also get um, um, speech, like public speaking lessons, English lessons, even if they are not going to answer in English, which is a very hard topic as well, but we're going to talk about that later. But they go to English lessons, they go to etiquette, like social etiquette lessons, social refinement. Um, they used to get a person from Puerto Rico who would um, teach them a lot of stuff in, in, you know, for etiquette and for style and how to act like a lady and all that stuff. So it, it's a really, really full package of preparation when, when they win Miss Venezuela. Another factor is that they take it so serious, like they go to training all the time. And this is like for a year that they would get the training. And I'm talking about all these things in a day or maybe two but it, it's a lot of it's a lot of things to take in and uh, they would still do it so that's part of why they're so successful in international pageants now the second part is the focus they are so focused when they go to the pageants they are not thinking about making any friends they don't really think of enjoying a lot of whatever they're doing outside of a venue or outside of a pageant you know these girls are taken to tours safaris and, and so many other places just to have fun in the days prior to the show um but she Ms. Venezuela, she's very very focused on um, that she has to do really well and that she's going to take the crown so she's very focused she's just thinking about that and that's probably why they make it to the finals all the time. Now, the third point is the physical imperfections, or maybe we would say the physical diversity. And it's that um, there's certainly surgeries. So we, we definitely got to talk about surgeries because they, some of them, they get lots of surgery for like nose, um, breast, and some other parts of the body that get altered because they feel that it would be better on the camera or they would look better on a camera with some modifications on their body. And of course, this is not something that they're told to do and they have to do it. It's something that they're told to do if they want to, because we have known about some girls who have refused to practice any surgeries. And I've probably counted like three or four of them. And um, they just said, no, I, I don't want to get any surgery. I just want to do it just the way I am and the director would tell them okay if you just want to do it that way just go ahead and do it. The thing is that they would have many sponsors but like back in the 90s and early 2000s they would have sponsors who would do teeth like um, teeth surgery, um, body surgery, any surgeries on the face and they would have to pay nothing for it so imagine that. That would be awesome <laughs> in some cases so they had all these possibilities to to improve their their appearance their looks now some of them said yes some of them said no their word was respected and even though they have some some of those women have said that to the cameras like they have said it to other people interviews and all that stuff so it's a fact the point of the surgeries is it good or not well i personally think that if you feel that you would be more comfortable looking on a specific way and you're not too comfortable with how you look right now then you should definitely go for surgery I mean it's an option like many other people do surgery and they're not judged for that so I, don't, I never understood why these women are, are being judged on if whether they decided to practice surgery or not I think that should be freedom of choice I think there's a lot of that in the world uh, surgery is nothing new. It's something that's been around for like so many decades and uh, many people like if you have the financial means to do it and if you're ready to do it and you want to do it, 
then just go for it. Now, the other point is the diets. So many people think, oh my God, they're so thin because they don't, they don't eat. Well, that's not true. Remember these women are between 18, somewhere between 18 years old and 25. There's so many people, I was one of them. When I, when I was in that age range, I didn't need to, to do any diet. And I was super skinny, I was 100 pounds with the same uh, five, nine inches tall. And, um, and these women, remember most of them or some of them, they do a lot of sports, they're super young. And some of them have, they, they, they feed really well, like healthy. So they don't need to do those extreme diets. I know some of those women have spoken of extreme diets, but I think it's something that they themselves do. I don't think they're told that they have to eat something specifically. They also have nutritionists, people, professionals who tell them, okay, you should eat this, this and that so that you continue eating healthy and you can look better, like you can improve your physical appearance. But I think it's been, um, uh, there's been a huge misconception on um, whether they eat or not and they look anorexic. Oh my God, that's probably, she's just, you know, so hungry. Yes, of course I get hungry because if you wanna eat whatever kind of food that has lots of sugar and other unhealthy uh, things in it or ingredients, then what's the point? Then that's not even healthy. So you're eating a lot, but you're still eating unhealthily. So it's kind of like better not to eat that. That's my point of view. So in general, that's pretty much what happens. Why Miss Venezuela always win? They have uh, a really huge training. They are professional perfectionists, so they don't like to make mistakes and they're trained to try not to make mistakes. I know some people are gonna say, oh yeah, but that's not how human nature works. That's not blah, blah, blah. But come on, if you're going to the Olympics, the truth is you need a strict diet. You need to work out a lot. You need to practice too much. And some of these athletes, I mean, I've, I've watched documentaries and some of those athletes, they complain that their trainers are so hard on them. And, and sometimes they feel like they have no life, but it's part of working for what you want. If you want to achieve something, you just have to go for it. You have to work for it. And it's hard. And it's hard. I mean, nothing in this world is either free or easy to do. You just have to work for it. And if you feel like it's really easy for you, it's because maybe you have been working for so long to achieve it. That's the case with Miss Venezuela. Um, I have also heard um, in, in, in pageants and from other girls, oh, it's their sash. It says Venezuela, so that weighs a lot. Like how, how heavy is the name of a country? Like that has nothing to do with it. Let's be realistic. When you see these women, very close you will notice what i'm talking about like that's a huge deal because they know what they're doing they prof they're professional they know how to be models they know how to be beauty queens they know how to act in front of a camera they know how to socially get involved in every situation going around them in the pageant because they counted with teacher or, or on teachers people who are professional in specific areas and they teach them how to do it and if they do something wrong they have to start again this is while they're being trained that, that is why there's no room for mistakes there's no room for um i'll just do it there's no such thing as uh, i'll just win it being myself yes you have to be yourself but you have to train and you have to learn from those who know Many other countries are doing that. We have seen the progress of many other countries and um, I think it's a very positive thing that women are nowadays uh, trying to empower other women. I think that's something that everyone should do, not only beauty queens, but also models. And it's a very positive thing to do. I think everybody should focus on that as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's, a, it's a huge deal of things that they should learn, that a contestant should learn about. And I think it's fair that um, people start thinking that it's not just a sash, it's not just the country that you're representing, it's what you're bringing on the stage, what you're bringing uh, with your participation to, to the pageant. So, well, that's, that's just my opinion.
Okay guys, that was all for today. I just wanted to let you know that you can subscribe to my channel by pressing the subscribe button and you can click the bell and you will get a new notification when I submit or I post new videos online. And of course, I wait for your comments. Everybody's opinion is important. Everybody has a different point of view and that's what we can discuss below. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode of Backstage with Angelo. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.